Dr. Nyame, have you encountered any misconceptions or stigmas related to prostate cancer within the underrepresented communities? And how do you address or mitigate these issues with your patients? Yeah. I think that there are a lot of misconceptions in all communities and stigmas around prostate cancer and its treatments, um, all the way from the early portion of diagnosis, stigma around maybe the rectal examination if you need one, uh, stigma around what may happen if you get a biopsy, misconceptions of biopsy, like will it spread the cancer all around your body? Will it make you, um, will it affect uh, erectile function? Uh, and then through treatments, right? Um, and so uh, one, of my, one of the primary jobs I feel like I have as a, as a doctor who specializes in this area is to is to take the time to hear patients, you know, express these concerns, um, to not uh, diminish or or belittle misconceptions, to really hear them, uh, and then to try and educate and um, and inform people about the realities without uh, overcorrecting either, right? So if someone comes to me and says, "Well, doc, I hear that if I have surgery, I'm going to have erectile dysfunction," I, you know. I can't, I shouldn't, and I don't say, oh, you're wrong, right? Um, but I might say, well, that's true. If if you have four erections before surgery, the likelihood that they're going to get better is is really low, and, and they, they're likely to go away or diminish. But if you have good erections, you know that there's a chance with certain techniques that they can't come back and will come back. And uh, and then I usually quote, you know, something like 50% of, of men who have surgery and or radiation will have erect, some erectile dysfunction, you know, within the five years following their treatment. So it's it's important to have a level ground where we share information candidly. Um, and I think it's important for patients to come prepared to have these discussions. Do your homework by talking to your your people in your circles uh, by, you know, looking at trusted resources online from places like the American Cancer Society, Prostate Cancer Foundation, um, cancer centers produce their own information and, and, and be prepared to have these discussions. My activation tip is the same as before. I think that building a community of survivors to share your concerns with and to get knowledge from is really important because there is no better source of information than the lived experience. And I think those individuals, especially the ones who volunteer to lead support groups and to share their stories, they, they, they're they wanting to uh, impart their experience uh, with other folks to, to empower them and support them. Um, so it's usually a really uh, fantastic community um, to support uh, understanding your diagnosis and what your journey is going to be like better and also a place to go to once you've experienced some of these things right it's not just about the misconceptions up front uh, and stigmas up front but a post diagnosis and treatment there are other concerns that may come up and um, having the right network can sometimes help you navigate um, finding the, the the solutions and the resources that are going to support you best mm -hmm.